Um, so is it time, guys? Yes. It it's Croatia. <laughs> Let's free time. I'm wondering whether we should uh, whether we should make everyone wait and skip Croatia. I mean, no, no. Let's, no. Let's, oh, let's I'm joking, it. guys. We know you've all been waiting to know what we think <laughs> about Croatia. No. Now, Jana, you were actually at Dora Live uh, for Eurovox and you got to interview uh, Let's Three after the yes. show. Um, so well done to you. But first of all, before we talk about uh, the winning song, what was your experience of Dora like? It was amazing. Oh, my God. I would love to do it again. And everyone was so kind there. Like, all the Croatian people were so welcoming. The whole show, I don't know how it looked like on TV, but the production was so good in the arena. Like, it looked amazing, all the lightnings and stuff. So I hope it really came across that well in TV as well. Um, because I think in the past years, it wasn't that good. So there was definitely an improvement. Like, I talked to Damia Keicho from, like, 2020, and he also said it got so much better production-wise this year. So, yeah, really good effort. Um, I really loved Dora. Um, well, they were not my favorite to win, but this song is growing on me. I was talking to them. They are really nice people. They are really interesting. Um, I think you were, you can expect a lot from them because, yeah, you will never know what they are doing. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I mean, they're a talking point, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And everyone has been talking about them and everyone will have an they're opinion. They're polarizing, yeah. Yeah, Samuel A, I know that you, you obviously didn't watch this on Saturday because you were glued no. to San Demo. Um, but... Well, it is an interesting choice, I have to say. <laughs> um, it's just that I, I still have to, to, to make up an opinion on that. I don't know if I love it or hate it completely. Like, I am on either like loving this because it's such an of it's such they are such icons. Come on, they're 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 super yes. great. Also live that, that they put on a show completely, or but the other hand, like the song wise, if I listen, I I ask myself, well, if I listen to this song on Spotify right by my own in my own bedroom, I will love it. Probably no. So I'm I'm just in the middle there, um, just just understanding if I love the performance and hate the song or just. It, or I like the song as well, but yeah, I'm sure that Croatia will, you know, um, will um, make people talk. They already like trending topic uh, regarding Eurovision in, on Twitter. Everybody's talking about them. Uh, in many polls, Croatians are, you know, bombarding the polls saying that this should be win Eurovision. This should go through to, to the final. I think that I, I am generally happy for Croatia because I saw that even with the, just with the televote alone, they surpassed you know mm -hmm. pretty much everyone. Like they were the first, even with just the televotes. So um, I, 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 when when a song does like that in the national selection, I really like it because it truly makes me understand that the country is supporting the entry going to Eurovision. And it's just really good because when something like that happens, you can be proud of your entry, even if you're if you don't really like it, but you know that your country likes it and your country is happy about being representing being represented by that particular uh, artist. So I'm happy for creations. Maybe it's not my cup of tea, but when something like that happens, I'm full on it. And the fact that is in 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 in. You know, it, it has a lot of Croatian, I think, uh, lifestyle and cultures in it. It's also a plus. Can I quickly add something? Because Samuel just said that the Croatians can really relate to the song. And I completely agree because I was talking to every artist that night and they were all so happy that the Let 3 won because everyone there loves them so much. They are iconic, as Samuel said. So I think that Croatians and generally Balkan people, I think also maybe Bosnians, they really stand behind this entry, mm -hmm. so it could be very interesting also to see the voting this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm just going to go uh, to. There's obviously a lot of uh, a lot of comments in the chat about this, and the first one is from uh, Tomislav. Uh, we must all visit beautiful uh, Hrvatska. Uh, well, Jan, are you was that your first time in Croatia? No, no, no. no? Not uh, Jess, have you been to Croatia? Yes, I've been to Zagreb. And Samuele? I've been to Istria several times. Oh, and I've been to Zagreb, Dubrovnik, Split. Oh. Absolutely love yes. Croatia. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and the fact that I could speak Italian was amazing as well. Uh, yeah, many cats. <laughs> well, funny enough, I was talking to someone today and we were talking about, you know, if we were to live in another country. And I actually said, you know, there, there's three countries that I could always see myself living in. Um, you can probably guess the first one, uh, Samuel, eh, which is Italy. Italy. Yes. <laughs> Croatia. And Croatia was actually the first foreign country that I wanted to mm. live in. And I have a dream to have my own little bar. In well, I think that you have that you have great taste. It's a it's a pipe dream, but yes, it's a beautiful country with uh, some of the best looking people in Europe. I will say <laughs> mm-hmm. that's only that's only my opinion. Um, anyway, uh, Jess, mm-hmm. uh, it's a televote only semi final in Liverpool. Yeah, it's going to sail. A hundred percent. I yeah. I mean, when I was watching uh, Dora. And when I saw Lepsui's performance, it did remind me a lot of some of the performances we used to see back in the Televo era of Eurovision. And so based on that, I could see it qualifying just because it's out there. The kind of the visuals, the outfits, of course. (laughs) But I mean, you know, everything we saw on the Dora stage is very memorable and it's going to stick in people's minds that the outfits all the props they had on stage, everything that was happening. Um, it's definitely going to grab people's attention. I can't say I'm loving the song itself. And I think maybe the staging is better than the song. But I, you know, but presumably, you know, obviously Croatians are very happy with this, you know, and, and Let3, you know, are staying true to themselves and just being them, which, you know, I'm happy they're doing. Um, and if, you know, they have a similar performance to Dora. I think televoters are either going to love it or they're going to hate it. Mm-hmm. And it's either going to do very well or very bad. I think that this has potential to pull out a Moldova 2022. Yes, I just hope people <clears throat> will get behind the meaning and the message because it's a, in, extremely important to understand the song because there's so much in the song. It's actually not a joke entry. It's like not a troll song in that case. It's like a serious troll, I would say, because the song itself is very serious. <laughs> um, it comes across as a troll, so I call it serious troll. And um, yeah, I think like the whole staging makes sense. Uh, the rockets and the tractor, like they even entered Dora with a tractor and had a mm-hmm. big party outside. That I was saw so it. Iconic. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. <clears throat> I think once you, I'll be honest, when I first watched it, I was like, what the hell is this? I didn't know the backstory. I didn't know anything about the band. I didn't know the, the meaning of the song. And I thought they were, I thought they were a comedy act, uh, kind of taking, you know, taking the piss. And we were going to go back to mm-hmm. these kind of joke entries that Jess, you alluded to before that we used to get mm-hmm. kind of in the televoting era. But then I started to see the comments and people telling me about the meaning of the song, what it was about, who who let three were, what their history was, how much, uh, how many Croatians were behind this song as well. And I started to appreciate it more. Now, there's parts of the song that I don't enjoy, but musically, there's parts that I find very Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well. Now, the the, uh, advantage that let three have is this is going to be a real talking point when it comes to Eurovision and news outlets are going to be reporting on this crazy song from Croatia that is a you know that is basically a dig at, 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 um, at a certain uh, dictator in the in the world shall we say um, mm-hmm. so people are going to know the message before they watch the song they're going to know what the song is about before they see it performed on the Eurovision stage they're going to be waiting for it they're going to see it it's going to be crazy and they're going to vote for it. Mm-hmm. It's, yep. it's going to stand out. And <clears throat> yeah. It's very clever of them, actually, because I'm trying to think back to a, another band that maybe had kind of this. I think it like maybe Hattery in uh, in mm-hmm. Tel Aviv. You know, people were waiting for that performance because it had been reported in the news outlets about this band with this, you know, in, insane kind of I, I don't know what type of performance you would call it. But it, you know, there was a lot of hype, and there will be around this song. So, in a way, it's a very, very clever choice. Mm-hmm. Now, do I wish that they had as good a chance with a more, shall we say, serious song or something that really demonstrated, uh, you know, their songwriting talents in the country or vocal talents? Yes, of course. But 
you know, Croatia's been done dirty before. And I'm just mm-hmm. thinking two years ago with Albania when they should have qualified without a doubt. And it's been year after year after year of this kind of, you know, coming 11th a couple of times in the semi-finals, um, you know, failing to qualify when they feel that they're sending something really good that Europe will love. Um, but just, yeah, just, yeah, just done dirty is the only way, you know, it, it's been a crime with some of the songs they have. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm quite happy, actually, with this choice now. And I love seeing the support that the Croatians have for this song. It, will it win Eurovision? Possibly not, because I don't, I, I can't see the juries mm-hmm. um, this as highly as maybe the televotes would. But somewhere I agree, it has the potential to be the Moldova televote success. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It can and we also had easily... to for this panel last year. So I feel like it could be similar, like with the televoting, we'll climb really high. And I think yeah, they exactly. were the best choice for Croatia this year, because we had Harmonia Dissonance as well. They were amazing. I love the girls so much. Oh my God. But they told me afterwards at the party that they had so much pressure that they didn't even know if they would be ready for Eurovision because they are quite unexperienced. So they told me they might try again like in a few years, but right now it's not their time and they are really happy for that three. So they all think it's like the best choice and I do agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and guys in the live chat, we know that everyone will have an opinion on Croatia. It's not going to be one of those songs that people <laughs> don't have an opinion on and we would love to but well, I have to first say, what is it like to watch us in two times speed? <laughs> um, uh, George Macon, you'll say no matter what happens, it may get through to the semis, but juries won't vote for this in the final. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris A is saying, it's funny that we will accept innate soppy love songs, no questions asked, then we get a song about something different <laughs> and we question the point of them. 100%. I yeah, I, I totally understand. I agree, one. yeah. I understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, Antonio, we've got uh, we've got tractors. Um, Saul Brown, most people won't get the context at all and we'll just see it as a trial. Your average Joe isn't going to look into their history. But I, I do think it will be reported on around Europe, the fact that this song is going to. Yes, and we had Constructor last year. Like, we didn't understand the meaning either in the beginning, so. Yeah, that's, that's a, a really good point, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, if, uh, many people didn't speak Croatian, they just saw someone washing their hands on mm-hmm. stage. Um, with beautiful eyes. Um, uh, Clavs, you're saying it's a rakia version of Zub, <laughs> Zubzidab. 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 Um, simple things. It's in your head. See, this is going to happen. You keep marching on the spot and saying, um, and thank you to those of you that have commented as well and let me know how to try and pronounce that. I'm, I hope I'm doing it right. Shit. Is that right? Yeah. How much shit? How much shit? And Sarah Halloran, yes, you must go to Croatia. It is beautiful. Um, I talk about Croatia a lot, you know. I'm always telling people to go there. I was telling my best friend to go there for her birthday. She's like, I want to go somewhere. I'm like, go to Croatia. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Cosmic Summers, uh, as long as the performance is digestible and organised chaos, unlike San Marino, mm-hmm. it will absolutely stalk uh, the televote. Uh, don't, talk, we'll... don't talk about San Marino 2022 in front of Chess. He, she will get mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Bosnian, Bog Bosnian. Hello, oh, from Bosnia, Governor. Can I just say, we miss you guys so mm-hmm. much in Eurovision. Mm-hmm. We hope you come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, we hope you come back soon. And we were actually uh, watching some old uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina Eurovision entries over the past couple of days, haven't we, guys? On the old YouTube. Uh, including including <laughs> Fazler, your first entry. Maybe not somewhere late, he was sleeping. No, I was um, sleeping. <laughs> but yeah, so mum, some oh, guys, I have some tea for you, by the way. I totally forgot. Because I just saw one comment. I just said one comment. Hmm? Is this tea that can be broadcast? Yes. <laughs> so no, it's about Dummy because I just saw the comment. Someone felt sad. And Dummy told me um, that he wants to come back to Eurovision with a strong, powerful Balkan ballad. So, like, Steve Livia today. So, yeah. We always love Balkan ballads. Love Balkan I always ballads. love Balkan ballads. So, yeah. <laughs> me too. Oh, yes. me too. And Barak, we will be there soon, I hope. Um, and yeah, we'd love to come there for a Eurovision. You guys need to come back. Yeah, <laughs> Turkey, Turkey. Like, yeah. I re- I repres- I've been representing Turkey in a fandom contest. And I've been discovering a lot of Turkish songs, like indie and electronic songs that 
should like would rock in Eurovision completely. Like Turkey should, needs to go to come back because I personally think that Turkey, if we consider Turkey Europe, that I culturally speaking, I think that Turkey can be can be Europe. Um, they have one of the best discographies in Europe. I think um, it's just amazing how the Turkish music can be di- diverse. It's just amazing. So I would l- love to see them back in Eurovision. It's a country that I really would like to see back. In Eurovision, but I know that Turkish broadcasters have an issue with big fives. So, as long as we have big fives, I think that Turkey will not come back. But we will we see. Was, I, I will was, see. I mean, there was talk, wasn't there? Uh, mm-hmm. like, Last year for for touring, exactly there, were, there was the talk. List this year, and, you know, sad. But let's keep our fingers crossed for 2024. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go uh, to the comments. Natalia, we're talking about Croatia. Uh, now that you understand the song and can connect the performance with the message, you love it. Uh, this is going to be their advantage, I think. It was not in your top three, but you're really happy they're representing you, uh, whatever happens. That's great. I love seeing people that are really behind their entries. Um, Leia, you're saying uh, you think Croatia could qualify. It's memorable. We haven't seen, uh, and we've seen many of these songs qualify to the final in the past. And uh, Tomislav wants to know where Samuel is. Where in Istria? I've been to um, uh, Rijeka, maybe. Um... I don't remember, like, I, I know the name in Italian, but it's a controversial name because oh, yeah, of... Okay, yeah, I've been there, like, two days Fiume, ago. It's, like, close uh, to Istria, yeah. Yeah, Fiume, and I've been to Rijeka, and I've been to... In generally, I, I, I've, like, I did all the, the coast of Istria, pretty much, with a car, and then we stopped uh, day by day, so... Yeah, but I was, like, 13, so it was pretty much 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. But, yeah... Yeah, we'll do a road trip. A summer road yeah, trip. Yeah, like like from Croatia Italy. from from my house is like from my my city is like five hours by car. So we'll, yeah. we'll stop off in Slovenia on the way. Yeah, like the, you have like forty kilometers yeah. of Slovenia, <laughs> and then you have Croatia. Um.